Ever wondered about those weird double underscores in Python? Things like init and string? They're called dunder methods, which is short for double underscore methods, and they're absolute game changers for writing cleaner, more powerful, and incredibly expressive code. In this video, we'll cover five essential dunder methods that every Python developer should know. Let's dive in. All right, let's start with the most common one, init. This is Python's constructor. Think of it like the setup routine for any object you create from a class. When you create a new instance of a class, init is automatically called to initialize that object's attributes. It's where you define the initial state of the object, making sure it's ready to go as soon as it's created. Let's open up PyCharm and take a look at some code. We'll start by defining a class called player, and now let's add an init method, and we'll add some properties, a player's name, health, and score. And let's add a print method so we can see when the init method runs. And let's create player one, We'll supply the name Blade Runner, and we'll take the default health score of 100 and the score of 0. For player 2, we'll call them Code Ninja, and we'll override the health score and give it a value of 150. And finally, let's print out the name and health values of the two objects. When we run the code, we can see that the player has joined the game message from the init methods for each player. We can also see the health values assigned to each player. By handling initialization within init, we ensure every player object starts in a complete and valid state, preventing errors from unset attributes. Next, let's talk about dunder string and dunder wrapper. These dunder methods define how your objects are represented as strings. This might sound simple, but it's incredibly powerful for debugging and user-facing output. Dunder string is for human-readable representation. Think of it as what you'd show to an end user. Dunder wrapper is for the official representation, which is primarily for developers. It should be unambiguous and ideally allow you to recreate the object. Let's go back to our player class. I've removed the print statement from init to make our output a little cleaner. Let's get rid of the print statements from our last exercise and add in simple print statements for each one of our players. And let's run that code. You can see the output we get, which is just the default representation showing we have player objects at some memory address. Not super helpful. Let's drop in a dunder string method. It will return our player name and health score. And now let's run the code again. By default, the string method is called, so we get a nice formatted output as a result. And we can see our Blade Runner and Code Ninja players and their health scores. Now let's add in the dunder wrapper method. Remember, this is the one that's more for developer use. And let's run our code once more. And we get the dunder string method output. If you run a debugger or just typed in an object name in your Python console, you'd see the wrapper output, which gives you all the details needed to understand or even recreate that same object. Let's explicitly invoke the wrapper method to see the output for player 2. And there we go. Now we can see the dunder wrapper output for Code Ninja. Up next is dunder add. Ever wanted to use the plus operator on your custom objects? That's where dunder add comes in. This dunder method allows you to define how your objects behave when the addition operator is used. It's a fantastic way to make your code more intuitive and mimic real-world operations. All right, back in the code. Here's a simple vector class that represents a 2D vector with X and Y properties. Building on what we just learned in this video, we have a dunder init method to initialize our object. And we have a dunder string method to nicely format our output. And we have two vector objects, v1 and v2, that we create. Let's try to add them with the plus operator and assign the result to a variable vsum, and then print the result. Running the code, we get a nasty error message. Unsupported operand types for plus, vector, and vector. All right, no problem at all. Let's add a dunder add method. The code uses isInstance to ensure that we only add vector objects, returning x plus x and y plus y. Otherwise, we raise a type error. This will make our code more robust. With that method in place, let's run our code again, and we get a new vector, nicely printed with our dunder string method. How do you compare two custom objects for equality? The default double equals operator usually checks to see if they're the exact same object in memory, but often you want to define equality based on their contents or attributes. That's where EQ comes in. This dunder method defines the functionality of the equality operator double equals for your custom classes. Now let's go back to our player class. We've added player ID for each player, along with their name, health, and score. 
We want two players to be considered equal if all these attributes match. And let's create three players. Notice player A has an ID of 101, is called Phoenix, has a health of 100, and a score of 500. And that happens to be the same as player C. Now let's add some code that checks to see if player A and B are equal, and then if player A and C are equal. If I run this code as is, you'll see that player A equals player B is false, which makes sense because every attribute is different. But if we check player A equals player C, we also get false, even though they have the exact same player ID, name, health, and score. Python's default double equals just sees them as two different objects in memory. Let's fix this. Let's implement Dunder EQ to define what equality means for our player objects. First, we check to see if our comparison object is an instance of player. If not, we return not implemented. If that check passes, we compare all the attributes that define our player state for equality. And now let's run our code once again. Now checking if player A equals player C, we return true. Using Dunder EQ makes comparison logic explicit and incredibly expressive since you get to define what equality of objects means for your application. And there you have it. Five essential Dunder methods that will seriously level up your Python game. From initializing objects with init to controlling their string representation with string and wrapper, enabling intuitive operations with add, and defining custom equality with EQ. Are you ready to take your Python code to the next level? I've got a video linked here that walks you through converting your code into a .exe file. It's a great way to share your applications without requiring others to install Python. Check it out next. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.